how not to outfit your boat, a block of foam and a river knife at the put in. Oh, yeah. All right, so it's Thursday afternoon, I'm packing the van up for the weekend and I'm outfitting boats. Why? Because that's when you outfit boats at home. You guys have asked me a few times now to cover outfitting and a lot like with the boof stroke, I never really got why because I feel like this has been beaten to death. But once I looked at what you were saying, I get it. There are a lot of instructionals of how people's kits work out of the factory, but not what you're really supposed to be accomplishing with it. So I'll show you how I go through my process of fitting all of these boats to my body. Let's go somewhere cool with a cold beverage and get started. You may have missed it, but I already gave you the key first point I want you to take away from this. I already paddled this boat. That's right, direct out of the plastic, took it to the river, and all I did was the absolute bare minimum. I moved the foot block so it was touching my feet fully extended, and from there I put the minimum of hip shims in. Once I got a rough fit in, now I'm gonna do my final adjustments on dry land. Why do I do it that way? Well, the traditional school of thought that I've always heard has been take this boat home, completely wedge yourself in there, and then see how it floats later. I take a completely different approach. I wanna get the highest performance out of the boat that I can, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out and slowly dial in the trim, meaning, where it floats front to back until I get the best performance out of it and then I'm gonna wedge myself in from there. So functionally, what does that really mean? That means very often when you see me reviewing these boats, paddling things I've never paddled before, I'm paddling with a good chunk of the outfitting kit right behind me in the boat. I'll stop on the way down, adding in hip shims, tightening things up until I get the boat right where I want it and then usually by the end of the run, I'm ready to start getting sendy. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's start to talk about the philosophy that I use when I outfit a boat. The analogy that I use most of the time is ski boot tight. And for those of you who ski, I grew up racing. So I wanna be really tight, tight to the point of discomfort where you settle into how tight it is. Another analogy that you could use is a bear hug. When someone wraps you up in a bear hug, it's full contact, it's uncomfortable, and then you sort of settle in to that tight claustrophobic feeling. That is exactly what I'm going for in the boat. I don't wanna have a hard point of contact here, a hard point of contact here, over contact here. I want everything to be uniformly very snug and I want to break in and settle into that. A lot of my boats, when I, they're outfitted, I'm relying on the mini cell actually compressing over the season, and boats that I don't paddle very often will be uncomfortable for about an hour or two until I pack them back in again. To me, that's normal, and that's just how I get a better performance out of my rides. So, let's start at the feet because that's the first point of contact that I'm going to dial in. I'm going to do the feet first because it's going to dictate the width of my hips depending on how far back my legs splay. So, and also, it's the easiest way for me to start to dial in that trim. Basically speaking, in a creek boat, you're going to be looking at two different kinds of foot blocks. You're either going to have something that is totally flat going up against the bulkhead, and if you want to learn how to shape and trim these to add angles, I'll put a link up here. Click that to go to where I did all of that in my RPM. Your other option is you might have something like the dagger set up. So these have foot buckets and cups, corresponding foam to go into them. Best thing you can do is look at their video on how all this works, but really advanced, super nice, adjustable system. From there, there are a couple different philosophies. Some people want their feet just toes touching, balls touching. I actually paddle with my feet out and flat at the bottom. That's just what I find comfortable. I like to be super wide-legged. 
and tuck up into stuff. So this is gonna be where personal preference and also just performance in terms of dialing your trim in is gonna be the most important thing. The second component of my outfitting that I'm gonna work with in my boat are my hip pads. These used to be something that you would glue in and shape and all this nonsense in the 90s. Today, functionally, there are two styles of, of hip pads. The one is a piece of foam that you're provided by the manufacturer, and it's going to have a ridge on the top and usually some sort of stackable shims on the back to adjust your thickness. Your second option are gonna be some sort of cloth covered foam pouch. These do more or less the same thing. Most of them are gonna be directional, meaning this one, for example, would be on the left because it opens up this way. But the thing to know about them is that there's a pouch on the back that you're gonna open up somehow, either the top, bottom, or side, and your shims are gonna be pieces of foam which stack inside. Usually, they are going to have a strap that's gonna wrap around the side of the seat. The dagger ones clip in. The most important thing that people don't seem to understand about thigh hooks and a question I get a lot is where do they actually go? Well, wearing a normal pair of pants, look at where your pocket is. This is where I like to have my thigh hook. What this allows me to do is have an open space where my butt is. It gives me a nice point of contact with that upper lip rolling over the top when I'm fully seated in the seat and it's not pinching off nerves and blood vessels which are closer to your hip. By doing this, I have a nice hinge point, a good place to pull on my leg when I'm trying to edge, and generally everything is very comfy. So that is the spot I'm targeting when I'm installing my hip pads. Your seat pad is one of the more important and more misunderstood parts of your outfitting. The reality is that the higher up that you sit in the boat, the smaller it effectively feels because you've got more leverage on the boat's swing. Your center of gravity is higher so you can make it effectively tippier or more responsive if that's the way you choose to look at it. And it's a really good way to be able to paddle a boat that's slightly bigger for you but have all the control of a slightly smaller boat. So for example, I often paddle larges with extra padding under the seat. Just like before, put that seat pad behind your seat when you go for your first test paddles and whip it out towards the end of the process. See what you think. It may be excellent and usually is for me and some boats it's gonna be absolutely terrible either because the deck height is so low, makes it really uncomfortable or it just makes the boat really wild and crazy. So something to always try out before you finalize your outfitting. Quick way to figure out if it's gonna work or not is throw it on top of the seat pad and give it a quick spin. Be really careful not to put too much foam underneath the bottom of your legs and cut off the blood vessels there. There's no right or wrong answer. This is complete experimentation that you should do on the water. So at this point, we have covered like 90% of what most outfitting jobs consist of. Most people, that's gonna be plenty. Is there a lot more that you can do? Absolutely. Looking in your kit, you're usually gonna find a lot more bibs and bobs, random pieces of foam that are going to be designed to pad out other places. In general though, pieces of foam with sticky back on them are absolutely invaluable and I tend to just hoard them. They're great for adding extra foam in the inside of a thigh hook if it's not really grabbing you or in front of that thigh hook to pad out your knee if it's hitting the inside of the boat. A lot of people suffer from heel and ankle pain from where their heel is crammed into the bottom of the boat. It is super helpful just to put a layer down right there and give you a little bit of something to work with. In some cases, if you're gonna be hardcore creaking, maybe just add as much foam to the bulkhead as you possibly can for a little bit of piton safety. Play boaters, you're gonna to wanna to do everything around the feet and knees that you possibly can because you know you're gonna be crammed in there for a long time. The back band. This is by far the piece of outfitting that you're going to touch and fidget with the most, right? Every time that you get in and out of the boat. One point that I would like to make about this is that when you're paddling difficult stuff, it's very easy to ratchet in two or three extra times and pull yourself out of your outfitting. So if that's you where you find that 
you know, in those high tension situations where you're scouting something and then you roll in and you just feel like you just weren't in your boat right, try this. Adjust your backband so that it is one or two clicks off of maxed out when you're just paddling normally. This way, if you really do need to get an extra click or two, you can get it. But by the same token, you won't be able to completely over tighten yourself by a couple inches, sit on the front of your seat, and then just not have your boat paddle the way you were expecting it to in the clutch. It seems really silly, but there are a couple people I know who have to do this and it just helps them with consistency in how their boat paddles. So what are the other tools that you may need to do outfitting properly? The one thing that we haven't touched on yet at all, right, is disassembly, moving the seat, all of those things. When do you know that you need to move the seat? I only move the seat if I've already am paddling the boat and to get the performance that I want, I have slid all the way off the back of the seat or all the way onto the front of the seat. From there, I'm gonna get an idea actually of how far to move the seat. What I see a lot of people saying is, oh, that boat, slam the seat all the way back. There's no reason for that. No one tested the boat like that. No one designed the boat to be paddle with the seat all the way back or they would have made that the center adjustment point, right? Makes no sense. So you know you need to move the seat when to get the performance that you want out of it you're sitting already on the back or the front of it. Figure out where the seat would need to slide to capture your butt properly. It's probably not more than an inch unless you're super tall. Grab a pencil, mark where the seat is or where you want the seat to go and slide accordingly. Once you do that, if your thigh hooks are super uncomfortable, then start fidgeting with them to get it right. But it's the absolute last piece of equipment that you should mess with mostly because they're a huge pain, but really just because they're the most superficial thing in the boat. While we're on this topic, let's talk about Allen keys or that little tool that comes in the boat to make all your adjustments. If you bought a boat and it came with one of these, get rid of it. You're just gonna strip out your screws trying to move that seat and or tighten it back up. Find yourself a dagger tool or use your one that came in the boat, go to the hardware store and find a true T-grip Allen key like this to do things properly. This will make your life much easier. You'll thank yourself again and again because almost every boat takes the same Allen key. It is a lifesaver. On that note, never, ever, ever just jam this into your foam pillar so you can take it with you if you need it. This lives in your car now. If you store this in your boat, it will rust, it will not fit into the key of the Allen head, and you are screwed. So proper maintenance, make your life way better. Now, it's not uncommon at some point that you are going to have to cut foam. There are a lot of different arguments about how to do this, but the most important thing is that the thinner the blade, the easier it's gonna be to make that cut. So I personally use box cutters, razor blades, that sort of thing. Now, clearly this is gonna work only for a set thickness of foam. When I do have to cut all the way through foam pillars or something like that in one shot, I used just a normal, really thin kitchen knife that is super sharp. A fillet knife, a really thin prep knife, something like that is the perfect tool. Well, no, a perfect tool is a bandsaw. If you got one of those, use a bandsaw. The last thing I highly recommend owning that isn't actually a tool is spray glue. This is 3M Super 77. It's what I use most of the time, but a number of different companies have spray adhesive. It is absolutely fantastic. It's replaced contact cement for me. It works great just to be able to spray both sides, let it tack, and then put it all together. I use this all the time, even on pads that already have the sticky back on it, just because a lot of times by the time I'm using that sticky back, it's been years of it sitting around and it's tacky, but it's not really gonna stick into the boat. This lets me prep both surfaces and get really good long lasting sticks. Each manufacturer has spent a lot of time and effort to make really good videos explaining their systems. And there's no reason for me to rehash that 
and not do as good a job explaining their system. So look in the description of this video. I will provide links to all the major manufacturers so you can see their descriptions on how the physical elements of their outfitting works. One of the aspects of outfitting that doesn't get covered a whole lot is where you're putting your gear. A lot of people lately have started putting their water bottle between their feet in front of them. That is absolutely not where you should prioritize that space. That is the quickest point of exit for you to grab something and go. It should be for your rope. There is no reason to prioritize a water bottle over safety equipment. So if you can put both in front of you, fine, but the rope absolutely gets priority. The water bottle can go behind the seat where you can take a minute to get to it, but, but in a quick grab situation, it's gonna be hard enough fumbling with those straps while you're trying to watch what's going on and get your rope at the same time. There is absolutely no way that you're gonna be able to respond in a similar amount of time if you have to get the back band out of your way or work around the back band before you can even get your rope in your hand. Smaller paddlers are gonna have their own set of problems when it comes to outfitting boats. And a lot of that is gonna to come to getting tight enough. For the most part, the best thing that you can do is look around, talk to your friends, and try to score extra outfitting. There are definitely a couple little more nuanced tricks that'll work. Here's my absolute favorite one. This is your normal hip pad. The issue with it for smaller paddlers is there's only so many shims that are gonna fit inside this pocket, right? Usually about three or four. This is a Liquid Logic hip pad. Notice the Velcro on both sides. What you can do is when these are totally maxed out, you can start stacking these between the hip pad and the seat. By the same token, you don't need to go and buy them. Somewhere in your kit, you probably have half inch or one inch foam. Grab it, put Velcro on both sides, and now you've already bumped your hip pads all that way. This makes it super easy without getting that kind of ballooned out of shape hip pad that happens if you overstack the inside of these pockets. And it should be a huge improvement for you. Another great trick for smaller paddlers is to completely over pad out the inside of your thigh hooks. This makes the boat feel way, way smaller. So a great way to do that is use old Jackson thigh hook liners. But again, any piece of foam that can curve like that or layer and some spray glue and you're in business. It works wonders for packing you in really tight. So a couple things as we come into the end of this video. Please always try to outfit your boat so that you're wearing shoes. Wearing shoes on the river is an absolute safety thing. It makes responding to emergencies on the river much quicker and easier. It is one of the best things that you can do to keep your friends safe. It's also long-term gonna make your boat way more comfortable if you can just fit shoes in there because they act as a really nice capsule for your feet. I've talked a lot about trim in this video. For many people, that may be a term that they don't know at all. No worries. I'm gonna drop a link up here to a video I did on boat sizing, which talks about trim, and that'll help you understand a little bit more about what it feels like to have your boat tilted too far forward, tilted too far back, versus that real hinging sweet spot. Finally, if you are doing something complex, a weird project, restoring an old boat, whatever, I have done a ton of those and made videos for them. So I am going to put a link over here for my boat builder series where we look at putting new guts into old stuff, all of those things. Hopefully that'll inspire you to do something cool or help you along the way if you've already picked out a project. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.